Right. Welcome to my milling machine again. Uh, yeah, I have a lot to update you guys on. So, a lot of the videos of my homemade paramotor are kind of outdated now because, well, first of all, uh, like the reduction that I originally designed was meant to run on like a timing belt type thing. And as it turns out, because the engine is a four stroke and it takes some time for the actual uh, power stroke to happen, um, what ends up happening is when you try to change speed of the engine, that screwdriver's not supposed to be there. But anyway, when you try to change the speed uh, of the engine, the propeller kind of disynchronizes from it. And so what happens is, there's like almost like a resonance that happens between the engine and the reduction in the prop. And so it just ends up shredding that timing belt. And so I actually since then ended up going to Micro V, which ended up solving that issue instantly. Uh, and But the, only th the one thing I ran into later is um, uh, the Micro V width that I chose was about one inch. And because the lower pulley, the one that hooks up to the motor is pretty small, uh, over time the belt would either stretch or wear down enough to where it would start to slip. So I would, you know, once again be down on power. So that brings me to today's project. Uh, we're going to machine a new reduction uh, plate. And what I've done this time is I've kind of stolen the idea. Here's one I already machined. So this actually goes on the engine itself. Uh, so this is the front uh, crank case cover and uh, the reason I did this is first of all the front cover is cast and it's incredibly weak and so I didn't not only that uh, having an extra plate on the front of it and that goes above it is a pretty heavy proposition and so this is gonna be much stronger and uh, I'll have to show you a story about uh, measuring the, measuring all this stuff out. I had to come up with a system of measuring the cover so I can actually translate it into CAD. But anyway, uh, so we're gonna do it again. I already did it once, but then I miscalculated the position of this part, so it actually ends up conflicting with uh, <laughs> with the fins on the bore. So I'm, I'm I moved in CAD this whole assembly over here, and what I'm also doing is you can probably tell that this is a pretty weird design right there for uh, mounting the upper pulley. The reason is, uh, I'm going to have four bolts that hold it in place, but the shaft uh, and the bearings it's themselves are going to be offset a little bit from the center. So when you rotate the whole assembly, it will actually be the, me the mechanism for tensioning the belt. Uh, not my original idea, but this is just temporary for my home build, because I have a lot of future plans, and one of them involves actually getting rid of the you know Predator 212 engine case altogether and then moving on to my own case design and uh, modified internals and all sorts of other goodies. Um, I think this one I'm gonna uh, develop a lot of other things I'm working on. Uh, one of the things I'm gonna do is implement an oil pump, uh, a mechanical oil pump inside the case um, and that will pump oil into the head of the motor because the delivery system on the Predator 212 and the GX type engines is kind of horrible. It's one of the worst designed parts of the engine in my opinion. Anyway, so let's get into it. That was a lot of talking. All right, so here's the reduction. Yep, yep, yep. So as you can see, first of all, the belt is now one and a half inch wide. Uh, like I said, this part we're gonna be machining today is this plate. So that's going to go directly on the front of the engine, so the engine, yeah, I think it's pretty self-explanatory actually. And so this comes with uh, new pulleys all around, and also for various reasons I wanted to add this uh, idler pulley, and um, so that's a part of the design now too. So the first cut is always a little sketchy, I like to bring it down to like incredibly slow feed rates, and then... Um, see how it's doing and then speed it up into full speed. I think we're ready to go.
happened. Seems the machine has lost its uh, vertical position after it finished this pocket and when it moved on to that one it thought it was still above the surface but it was definitely cutting into it. Anyway, so that's interesting. Uh, I'm gonna have to just reset my Z and then uh, you know machine the next two pockets separately. But we are making progress. This is about an hour in. Uh, yeah, surface finish is great. Speed is great. I'll take it. Happened again. I know what's going on. This motor is designed for like 24 something volts or 30 volts, whatever. Uh, and my power supply runs a little bit hot. It runs at like 38. So I noticed it was getting really hot, like to the point where I could smell the insulation, you know, on the wire on the inside. Anyway, uh, so I had to turn down the torque that the, the actual amps that the stepper driver produces. So I turned that, that quite a bit down, but I have the machine just when it moves around, when it goes to different positions, set to move really quick actually, like 100 in inches per minute, which for this thing is way too fast. Anyway, uh, so it was starting to skip steps because it accelerates to this high speed all of a sudden and um, it's just too much for it. So uh, I turned down the speed, so we should be good from now on. But look at that, it's looking pretty good. Just as a last step here, uh, what I did is I machined the flywheel uh, on my lathe to accept uh, ring gear, so I now have electric start, which is a great safety feature for a belt-driven paramotor with no clutch. Um, yeah, and as you can see, everything still fits together, so I'm pretty stoked. Uh, I have a new manifold to make for an upgraded carb, and um, yeah, I'll keep you guys posted. More importantly, thanks for watching, and uh, please feel free to subscribe so you can follow my progress, and uh, share and comment below if you have any questions or concerns. Uh, thanks again.